Greetings. It is I, the Great One Himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the internet. Give me Bitcoin and Namecoin, damn you. Give me. Begging. I'm begging. I'm like, I'm like your Facebook feed, news feed, whatever the fuck it's called. It's just constant begging for money, whining for attention and selfies from 14-year-old girls. Let's talk about Facebook. Let's talk about Facebook in the context of the things I see on there that illustrate how clueless people are. Okay, so, made the mistake of logging onto Facebook yesterday. Because logging onto Facebook is always a mistake. And I see this thing in my newsfeed from this person I'm friends with. One of these social justice warriors. It's a link to a video, which I didn't watch the video, but thankfully I didn't have to because the page actually is a transcript of the video, and we'll talk about that. We'll go through the video. But the comment that this person attached to the video is this, quote, People need to know about this. So unfair, so deeply unfair, and we have the power to change it, unquote. Now, this is a person who does not recognize that he is a slave. Now, what this video is about is about benzene poisoning. Because it's the year 2014, and we have the internet, and we have the smartest generation ever, and nobody knows about benzene poisoning, apparently. As I have talked about in the past, I pointed this out here and there. I've not done deep research on it, but I pointed this out. The manufacturing of our technology items, computers, cell phones, all this other stuff, requires heavy elements. Heavy elements have to be mined out of the ground. That means strip mining. That means mining. When the ore that has these heavy elements in it is removed from the ground, the heavy elements have to be separated from the ore. And I may not be using the word ore correctly here. So we will say the heavy elements have to be removed from the surrounding rocks, soil, whatever the fuck it is. I'm not a geologist. And I don't want to use terms incorrectly. But the ore has to be separated out, it has to be purified. In order to do this, again, I don't know the exact details, I'm not a meteorolo mineralogist, I'm not a chemist, I'm not a geologist. I do know, however, that getting the heavy elements out of the surrounding material involves the use of a lot of chemicals. Chemicals which are incredibly toxic. And of course, get dumped into the environment, because as the tree huggers say, what do you mean throw things away? There is no away. And they're kind of right about that. So every time you buy a new Apple device, what you're buying is the result of essentially, well, we're all slaves to the government, but people who are essentially slave labor in Africa, primarily, not all heavy metals come from Africa, but Africa has large deposits of the heavy metals that are used for manufacturing computers and cell phones and iPads and all this other shit. Much of the heavy metals in the devices you're buying in order to feel good about yourself and access the internet and post shit like this were manufactured using heavy metals that were mined by slave labor in Africa. So, you know, poor black people and using toxic chemicals, which these poor black people are exposed to, poor as in financially poor. I don't mean poor as in, oh, poor you, woe is me kind of poor. I mean poor as in they don't have financial resources, like upper middle class white people in the United States who buy fucking Apple devices. Okay, poor black people exposed to toxic chemicals who are slave labor. If it wasn't for them, you wouldn't have your fucking iPad to go on Facebook to post your post your social justice shit. So this is about benzene poisoning, which is another heavy metal which is used in manufacturing these products and how people exposed to the benzene are being poisoned. Now, quick before I forget about it, let me remind you that there is no such thing as a toxic substance. Let me say that again for those of you who are a little slow. There is no such thing as a toxic substance. When somebody says to you, well, benzene is toxic. No, it's not. When somebody says to you, arsenic is toxic, it's poisonous. No, it's not. There is no such thing as a toxic, sub toxic substance. All substances are toxic. 
It has nothing to do with the substance. It has to do with the dosage. A small amount of arsenic will not harm you. A sufficient amount of arsenic will kill you. A small amount of benzene will not harm you. A sufficient amount of benzene will fuck you up. A small amount of depleted uranium will not harm you. A sufficient amount of depleted uranium, such as the military of the United States has dumped in some Middle Eastern countries, will completely fuck up the DNA of the entire population. Stefan Molyneux has talked about this multiple times. It's one of his major talking points about how all the depleted uranium that we have fired in Middle Eastern countries in some areas has completely destroyed the DNA of the people who live there. And people are going to be born in those countries with birth defects for the next, whatever, 100 years, 500 years, 1,000 years. Who the fuck knows? But it's okay, right? Because Obama is the president and he's black and he's the messiah. So it's okay to dump depleted uranium shells in those countries, shooting at people and killing them and fucking up their DNA because Obama. Okay, so there is no toxic substance. Everything is toxic in the appropriate dose. And of course, the amount, the dose needed for any given person is going to vary slightly. First, let's look at the quote before we delve into the transcript. Or the comment from the poster, I should say. People need to know about this. Okay? If people need to know about this, why isn't the media telling them? Right? Because the media is supposed to be here to provide information to the people. The media, in, in your statist worldview, and I'm analyzing this from the view of a statist. This is what I would say to a statist who believes it. So, and they'll say, well, Fox News is a bunch of Republicans. Okay, great. What about MSNBC? Why aren't they telling anybody? If people need to know about this, why isn't Jezebel and whatever other fucking dope-smoking hippie left-wing websites? Okay, if people need to know about this, why aren't they being told? Why isn't the media that you worship so much, that you believe is a source of information, why isn't the media telling people? If people need to know about this, why isn't the government telling people about this? This is a democracy, right? The government, your Messiah, your Lord and Savior, Hussein Obama, the government is here to serve the people, right? The government is here to do what's best for the people. The government cares about us. The government, this is the most transparent administration ever. If the people need to know about this, why isn't your Lord and Savior, Hussein Obama, trumpeting this from the roof of the White House. So unfair. Well, yes. It could be unfair, because you know what? Life is unfair. So deeply unfair. It's not just unfair, it's deeply unfair. Well, yeah. I mean, it's rather deeply unfair that the government of the United States, with your support, is dumping huge amounts of financial and logistical and human resources into putting black people in cages in the United States of America for having marijuana as opposed to using those same resources to, say, for example, provide clean drinking water to black people in Africa. But of course, black people in Africa don't really need clean drinking water. They just need to stay alive long enough to mine the chemicals, I mean, excuse me, mine the minerals out of the earth, which are used to make your iPad. It doesn't really matter that much if they have clean drinking water, because they're going to die anyway from exposure to the toxic chemicals. final sentence is what sort of set me over the edge. <clears throat> and we have the power to change it. Now this is the delusion that those of you who are slaves hold in your brains. We have the power to change it. Okay. 
So these people, and as we'll read in the transcript, these people are getting benzene poisoning. And let's say that everything in the transcript is true. The people are getting benzene poisoning. They're getting it from working on technology devices. If we, it's this royal we, there's a mouse in his pocket, I don't know. If we have the power to change it, then change it. If we have the power to change this, then it shouldn't be a problem anymore. You change it. Now, of course, we don't have the power to change it. We, this royal we, are a bunch of slaves. The corporations and the government and the other aspects of the state will continue to do whatever the fuck they want to do. We cannot change a goddamn thing. We are fucking delusional. When we say some shit like we have the power to change it, we are living in a fucking fantasy world. We will continue to buy every fucking device that Apple manufactures in this blind, grasping need for validation and attention and conformity. The very fact that you're posting this shit on Facebook, as opposed to actually doing something about it, illustrates that we do not have the power to change it. If my bicycle tire goes flat, I have the power to change it. I don't need to go on Facebook and post about changing the tire. I just changed the fucking tire. Now, let me also say that taking information like this and posting it on Facebook, that's, and, and this is the crux, the crux of this is it's not the dissemination of this information on Facebook I'm annoyed with. It's, it's this statement right here that we have the power to change it, that people are this delusional. When we get to the transcript, we'll find out what we're talking about here is slave labor in China building products for Apple computers. And for this person to say that we have the power to change this, I mean, it's nonsensical, okay? First of all, these slaves in China are the property of the Chinese government. There's nothing that we in the United States can do about that. Unless, of course, we eliminate the state in the United States and eliminate the state in China. That's not going to happen. And there's nothing we can do about this in the sense that people who are members of the cult of Apple are not going to stop buying Apple products, okay? Just here, just recently, and I know very little about the details, but what I've gathered from the small things I've seen is this, the CEO of Mozilla Foundation that makes Firefox web browser donated some money to an organization that is opposed to homosexuals getting married. I don't know the exact details, as I said. And then I see apparently he resigned. I don't know if he was forced to resign, if he did it on his own, whatever. I mean, the CEO of Apple, whoever it is, could go on national television and ass fuck 10 eight-year-old boys in a row and slap them in the face and then slit their throats and those of you who buy Apple products would continue to buy Apple products because you're just that fucking brainwashed. So there's nothing we, whoever the fuck this we is, can do about this. Apple Corporation will continue to do whatever the Apple Corporation chooses to do and you will continue to buy their products. You will. Of course, the person who posted this owns a Macintosh. I know that for a fact, or at least owned. He may not, I don't know what he owns right this very moment, but in the past, he's owned a Macintosh.
Let me wake my computer up and let's read this transcript here. Narrator. This is what matters. The experience of a product. Will it make life better? Until every idea we touch enhances each life it touches. I don't even know what the fuck that means. Yes, products. Will they make my life better? Will they allow me to compensate for the fact that I don't have any fucking friends, I don't have a personality, I don't have any creativity? I'm a fucking loser. I need products in order to compensate and make my life better. It's one thing to use products as a tool. I can't record a podcast without certain devices, without products. But again, we're talking about cult of Apple people here. I don't define myself by my products that I use for recording this podcast the way that Apple cultists define themselves by their MacBooks and their Airbooks or whatever the fuck they are and their iPads and their iPods and their iPhones. You notice how the Apple shit is all I? Is that I as an internet or is that I as in me? And what I love is anarcho-capitalists are accused of being selfish. And yet cult of Mac people who are overwhelmingly left-wing liberals, overwhelmingly left-wing statists, all have devices that start with I as in me. Anyway, narrator, woman says, when I was in third grade, my mother left home to work as a migrant worker. When I was in seventh grade, we stopped hearing from her. I wanted to find her, to rescue her. My mind was set on earning enough money as possible. Woman, my dream was to leave home, to leave the countryside and the mountains behind me. I was only 14 when I started to work on the factory. I went to work because my parents worked so hard all year long to pay for my education. So your parents worked hard to pay for your education, and your education let you go work in a factory when you were 14. Well, that was a very useful education, wasn't it? Was that, was that education, by chance, provided by the state? Now keep in mind, we're talking about China. That education your parents worked so hard to pay for, was it provided by the state? And what have I said over and over and over about public education? It's, the point of public education is to make people smart enough to work in factories. In China, this also holds true. Her parents worked really hard to make enough money to pay for her education so she could do what when she's 14 years old? Go work in a factory. Oh, oh, the glory of public education. The glory of serving the state. By the way, I haven't actually read this transcript yet. This is totally cold. 100% completely cold. Narrator. In China, every year, over 12 million teenagers leave home to find work. They're part of the 260 million Chinese. You must travel far from home just to make a living. China has one of the most extensive states on the planet. China is a formerly communist socialist country. In communist and socialist countries, everybody's supposed to have a job. Everybody's supposed to have an income. Yet 260 million people have to travel far from home just to make a living? Sounds rather like a failure of the state to me. Woman, my workday started at 8 a.m. and ended at 11 p.m. There were no holidays. I only had one night off a month. We sat there all day cleaning phone chips and using chemicals. Ah, yes, cleaning phone chips with chemicals. This woman's obviously very selfish because she doesn't realize that these phone chips need to be cleaned so that upper middle class white people in the United States can have a new cell phone every year. This woman is obviously very, very selfish because she doesn't realize that upper middle class white people who attend TED Talks in the United States need to be able to live tweet the TED Talk from the latest iPhone in order to be fulfilled. And she should be happy that she's allowed the opportunity to provide service to these upper middle class white people in the United States from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. You know, people are very, very selfish. That's what I've noticed. This woman, very selfish. Woman. 
There was an Apple screen and a Nokia screen. When I wasn't eating or sleeping, I would be wiping something. It was the only thing I did. There was no other ventilation, no windows. The smell was horrible at first, but eventually I got used to it. Mail. My son's name is Ming Quinn Pong. He just turned 26 years old. This should be the best time of his life, but unfortunately he was diagnosed with leukemia in May of 2009. After three examinations over 12 months, it was confirmed to be occupational leukemia. It was a form of cancer caused by benzene. So benzene causes cancer. Exposure to the benzene, exposure to a heavy metal. The heavy metal. Okay. And why? Now, I don't know if the son was exposed to the benzene directly or if it came because his parents had been exposed to it so long. But the point is, exposure to the benzene. Why was this person exposed to benzene to the point that it caused leukemia? Well, because of the state and because of statist. Because those of you who are statist support the corporations. You buy the devices the corporation manufactures. And the corporation is able to manufacture these devices at low cost using slave labor in China because of the government in China. All of this is because of the state, the state that you support, the state that you love, the state that you are actively a part of. Narrator. Benzene is a Category 1 carcinogen that is banned in most Western countries for industrial use. China, maker of more than 50% of the world, world's cell phones, is an exception. This reminds me of two things. Having a conversation a while back with somebody who works at Otterbox. Otterbox, for those of you who don't know, is a company that takes petrochemical products made by the petrochemical industrial complex that you hippies hate so much and molds them into protective containers for cell phones and iPads and iPhones. And this person who works at Otterbox was bragging to me about how Otterbox cares about the environment and how the plastic they use for their devices is manufactured by a process that results in toxic chemicals that are banned in the United States. And so that's why their plastic is manufactured in third world countries. And I thought, yes, that's brilliant. That is so caring and so concerned about the environment that you manufacture your toxic chemicals in third world countries where it's not illegal. The other thing that this makes me think about is the fact that here, so benzene, as again, it's a category one carcinogen. So it's a toxic substance. Again, all substances are toxic. Benzene is a heavy metal. And so it's banned in the United States, you can't be exposed to it. Yet at the very same time, the government of the United States is forcing every household to put in the household a heavy metal, which in sufficient quantities is toxic. I'm talking about the mercury in the CFC light bulbs that you are being forced to purchase by the government. Yin Yeting says, quote, back to the transcript here, I've now been through 28 chemotherapy treatments. My bones hurt a lot. It feels like thousands of ants biting my insides. It's really painful. Again, we see here a very selfish person. You know, the fact that you're in pain from chemotherapy should be irrelevant to the fact that upper middle class white people in the United States need the iPhone 17 or 18 or 12 or whatever the newest one is. And for you to think that your personal pain of 
the, your physical and mental pain of going through chemotherapy is more important than white people at TED Talks having iPhones is incredibly selfish. These white people with iPhones who go to TED Talks, they care about you. They care about social justice. They care about third world countries. They care about the poor. And they need to be able to live tweet this. And the fact that you're not willing to make this sacrifice for them is really fucking selfish. It's really fucking selfish. Mail. I've been living in this hospital for six years now. It feels like a prison and there's no way to escape. I feel like my life is over. I really don't know what to do. You know, you should be happy to have what such a great healthcare system that you're allowed to live in the hospital for six years. I mean, in the United States of America, where people are oppressed and only get to go to TED Talks and live tweet them, you know, we don't have socialized healthcare like you do in your country of China. You should be fortunate that you've got such a great healthcare system that allows you to live in the hospital for six years. The oppressed people in the United States of America don't get to live in the hospital for six years. All they have is iPhones and iPods. Mail. It took 19 months of struggle to prove my leukemia was workplace related. I petitioned to the government authorities many times and was sent home by force. Well, now obviously, <clears throat> then your leukemia is not workplace related because we know governments always care about their people. Governments do what's best for those people. And if the government sends you home by force, then that's what's best for you. It's like in the United States. We have a wonderful caring government that forces you to buy health care. And if you don't buy health care, you have to pay fines. And if you don't pay the fines, then you'll be put into a cage. We have a wonderful government that if you choose to go out and protest, the government will send police to spray you in the face with pepper spray or beat you up and handcuff you and arrest you. We have a wonderful government that puts people in cages for having plants. So you should consider yourself fortunate that your government cares about you so much that when you go to the government authorities because you believe you were made sick by exposure to a chemical which your government says it's perfectly okay for you to be exposed to while working for a corporation from the United States of America in order to make iPhones for upper middle class white people who go to TED events and the government uses force to tell you to fuck off and die. You should consider yourself fortunate that you have a government that's there to look out for you and provide for you. You people are just really fucking selfish. The idea that you know, for, for all of these Chinese people to think that their lives and their happiness and their health is more important than upper middle class white people in the United States. I just, I don't think I can emphasize how selfish this is. Woman, the factory manager called my coworkers, called my coworker and told him not to tell other workers what was wrong. Well, Gee, of course. You mean the corporations don't want people who work for them telling other people bad stuff about the corporation? I'm shocked. Mail. There were several people who accompanied me to the hospital when I received the diagnosis. They carried with them a bag of money. Yes, to pay off the hospital. I mean, duh. Money talks, bullshit walks. Woman. They went ahead in my absence. They concluded my cancer was not caused by working at the factory and I was denied compensation. When I was on the street, I would take a look at anyone who held a close look at anyone who had a physical resemblance to my mother. I was worried what had happened to her and that she was suffering. That's why I had been working so hard, but now everything is, everything is over. Basically, that's babbling, but yes, of course, the hospital, which is part of the medical industrial complex, which is part of the state, is going to determine that your cancer isn't caused by working at the factory, which is part of the industrial complex and part of the state. Again, this is like going to HR department and saying, hey, this company really sucks. Do you agree with me? Of course they're going to say no. Woman, you know what? When I was in the hospital, I couldn't walk, but I didn't, tell, ter didn't dare tell my mother. I had expected that I would be responsible, that I would try to release some of my burdens from my parents, but the truth is I ended up as their burden. Yi Yetting. 
He jumped off the building. He ultimately chose to end his own life. He couldn't take the struggle any longer, the pressure of dealing with this illness, the factory, and benzene poisoning. I propose that we all stand up and hold a silent tribute for Ming. We are all benzene patients. For those of us who are alive, we need to fight for our rights for justice and live on. Well, you can't fight for your rights as long as there's a state. As long as there's a state, you don't have any fucking rights. Okay? You are the property of your government. And until you get rid of your government and everything comes with the government, because when you get rid of the government, you get rid of the corporations. When you get rid of the corporations, you don't have to be a slave to the corporations of the government anymore. You can free yourself from the state. But you're not going to free yourself from the state. China has a long, wonderful history of obedience to the state. China is fantastically statist. And of course, as long as upper middle class white people in the United States keep pumping money into the Apple Corporation, the Apple Corporation will continue to pump money into the Chinese government. The Chinese government will continue to make goddamn sure that Apple can manufacture their products in China using slave labor and exposing people to heavy metals and other chemicals in excessive quantities that makes them sick. Sheik Ping Kwa says, Benzene is a horrifying poison that causes cancer. We want to deliver a message to the public that benzene can be replaced by safer alternatives. Oh, goody for you. Goody for you. You're going to deliver a message to the public. Do you realize the public doesn't give a fuck? Do you realize the public cares about live tweeting TED events? They don't give a shit about you. They don't give a shit about you. They don't give a shit about you. Pauline Sivroom. We want brands to take responsibility for working conditions at their supplier factories and good occupational health and safety measures and policies and practices. And banning the use of benzene is just part of that. It's just part of supply chain responsibility. Yes, but you see, people who work for corporations and people who work for governments don't have to behave responsibly because none of these people can be held accountable for their actions. Nobody, no particular, and even if a particular person, this, this is, I've talked about this before, the beauty of the corporation the corporation does things. Of course, corporations can't actually do things. So when corporation, when things happen, like the British Petroleum spill, no particular person is held accountable. The accountability falls on the corporation. Now, occasionally, and we'll use the Mozilla thingy. So the CEO at Mozilla gave some money to somebody. People didn't like it. So he steps down. So the corporation continues. The same thing will happen with Apple. Apple will use slave labor in China to build its devices. This is not news to anybody. We've known this for years. The ramifications to the Apple Corporation have been absolutely zero. Zero. Let's say that this video somehow manages to change something and make people get really pissed off at Apple. Okay, so the corporation as an entity will throw somebody out. They'll find some scapegoat. They'll find some, you know, the CEO or some high-level executive to quote-unquote blame for all of this and they'll throw this person out of the corporation and everybody will say oh look there's been justice and everything will continue business as usual in the presence of the state individuals cannot be held accountable when those individuals are government employees or corporation employees. It just can't happen. Sheik Ping Kwan says, Benzene is widely used in various industries, sporting goods, printing, and electronic productions, as well as finished materials contain benzene. Not only are the workers working in very toxic environments, but the customers who buy the products are also exposed to benzene. 
Pauline Sivroom, at the moment, consumers don't have a benzene-free choice. There are no benzene-free electronics, so you can't go to a shop and ask for one thing or the other. But consumers can ask and get in touch with the brands and say, what is the whole issue with benzene? I'm worried and concerned about benzene poisoning and put some pressure on the brands. No, they can't, because to do that would require effort on the part of upper middle class white people who don't have time for that shit. See, again, this is why upper middle class white people post shit on Facebook like this video, because the alternative to posting shit like this on Facebook is to actually do something about it. Is to, and no, and so yes, you're right. There is no, okay, so there's no, I shouldn't say you're right. I don't know if you're right or not. Let's say there is no benzene free alternative. So consumers are gonna go and they're gonna say, we're not buying a cell phone that unless it's benzene free. And the cell phone manufacturers are gonna say, well, we don't have any such thing. And so now the consumer has a choice. The consumer can buy a cell phone that is has benzene in it or not own a cell phone. See year 2014. How many people do you know are going to not own a cell phone? Zero. The cell phone manufacturers do not have to provide a benzene-free cell phone choice because nobody is going to stop buying cell phones because they're manufactured using benzene. Nobody. Absolutely nobody. Now, some of you say, but great one. Don't you always talk about the market? How the market? Yes. Here's the thing. There is no market here. In a actual free market environment, a company could be formed and people could start manufacturing cell phones that are not manufactured using benzene. But that's not going to happen because the state via regulations will prevent that company from ever coming into power. It, it's just like go out and try to start a company that manufactures automobiles. You're never going to be able to do it. The regulations will crush you. The unions will crush you. The cost of doing business will crush you. The licensings and fees and the regulations will, just, will crush you. So there can be no startup company that makes cell phones that don't have benzene involved in the process. So you're at the mercy because of this government imposed monopoly. You're at the mercy of the existing corporations and the existing corporations have no incentive at all to create benzene free devices because you're going to buy what they manufacture no matter what, because you're not going to go without a cell phone. And if somebody does start making cell phones that don't have benzene, if somehow or another somebody got through all the regulations and the hurdles and so forth and so on, the government at the beck and call of the corporations will simply make those phones illegal, just like incandescent light bulbs have now been made illegal because they don't have mercury in them. They don't have a heavy metal in them, which in sufficient doses is toxic. To say that the corporations are going to stop making cell phones that have heavy metal in them at the very same time that the government is forcing you to buy light bulbs from corporations that have heavy metals in them. I mean, you have to be living in a fucking fantasy world. You have to be delusional. You have to be absolutely clueless and stupid to believe this.